This podcast is brought to you by listeners on Patreon. Praise be to our Dark Lords Mario and Hedwig for bringing us this bounteous feast. Praise them. Hello and welcome to the Probably Bad Podcast, a podcast which is definitely bad. Pencil. Paper. And today's Probably Bad RPG idea is... Host your game session in an escape room and don't let anyone out until the campaign is done. So, Paper chose this one and Paper, so you're suggesting kidnapping. Um, it's not, explain. It's not necessarily kidnapping. If they consent to go with you... It's only false imprisonment. Yeah, false imprison your game group. It's fine. I think oh. the my immediate thought when I saw it was most escape rooms only give you an hour. So do you need to incapacitate the escape room staff in some way? Or do you just have to finish it in an hour? Maybe the escape room staff are your game group. They can't end it after an hour because they're all trapped in there. Essentially, what you've done is staged a coup of the escape room and forced everyone to play your campaign. Which, again, negates the kidnapping aspect, because if they're already there, again, it's only false imprisonment. Need to be very clear on this, Your Honour. Become our Patreon for more um, advice on how to not technically kidnap people. Do you have any ideas on how to make this into, like, a good idea? Or are we just going to come up with more ways to legally trap people in your escape room? Well, the thing is, you could incorporate the escape room quite easily. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you get ones that are a wizard has trapped you or you're in a dungeon and things like that. And I yeah. think, I mean, at that point, you're just LARPing. Yeah, like it's essentially a small and very focused LARP at that point. But, you know, people like LARP. Like... Yeah. It's got an English escape there, room that's already been set up. You're not going to give anything away as the DM. Like, you know, sometimes a player might say something and the DM, just with their face, just makes it very clear whether that's right or wrong. Yeah. If it's an escape room that's already been designed by the time that you get involved, you don't know what the solution is. Yeah. yeah it's like, essentially... your role as the DM at that point is just to get them in there. It's low yes. effort DMing. Yeah, so essentially it is some clues and stuff and puzzles. You leave them in there and then you go and have a cup of tea somewhere else and come back after everyone's done the campaign themselves. I mean, doing an escape room with your D&D group does feel like a good way to sort of bond. Yeah. Especially if it's a newer group, it could actually be quite useful for yeah. getting comfortable with each other. Yeah, like, what do you think it would be in any way a good idea to go to an escape room and do it in character as your D&D or whatever characters? Assuming it's one that, like, thematically fits with your setting. So I could see that being weird and awkward, but also I could see it being very fun if it's with the right group. It would be very fun up until the point where you realise all of your characters are dumbasses. It does have the problem that your character's stupid decisions now have actual consequences for you, other than in some fantasy world. Yeah, it's like, what if, what if your character's one of those classic kind of no self-control rogues and you end up stealing the solution to one of the puzzles. <laughs> Don't want to seduce the or of how I puzzle, but... Have you considered seducing 
the escape room staff. Just now going into probably bad escape room ideas. And solve puzzles just like show up in your skin pierced clothing and escape room guard into giving you the win. God is not the word there. Escape room police. They kind of are guards. They lock you in a room and just are not allowed to let you leave. They so basically are ice guards. Ice escape rooms. Which means by D&D logic, you can either seduce the escape room staff or stab them on your way in and run away. As you can see, lockdown is going well for all of us. Yeah, uh, legi- so a uh, legitimately good RPG idea is go to an escape room in character, stab the guards, and seduce all of the puzzles. I think we've given worse suggestions. That is fair, that is fair. I think you could definitely use an escape room as some kind of LARP. Although not at the moment, because of social distancing. Mm. But even but... genuinely... Mm. Using, like, if an escape room closes at, say, six, Mm -hmm. and you play your game at eight, you could use it to get some atmosphere. Just go in there and play your game normally, but you've got those surroundings and you're getting a lot more immersed Mm -hmm. in the whole concept. Yeah. And because they've got different themes, it's like, oh, you're doing a pirate campaign? Here's a pirate ship. You're doing a sci-fi game? Here's a spaceship. Yeah. You have to admit, it's not the worst idea we've done on this podcast. It is is very far from the worst idea we've done on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, like kidnapping people turned out to actually lead to some decent ideas. Not necessarily kidnapping. Legally not kidnapping led to some interesting ideas. So... Before we move on to questions, I don't think we've actually plugged the Patreon for a couple oh. of episodes. Um, at least we've only done it at the end and how many people listen to the at the end of the podcast plug. Um, so if you go to patreon.com slash probably bad RPG ideas, uh, you can support us and get access to you know bonus episodes, homebrew, that sort of thing. Um I want to thank all our patrons, actually, because yeah. you've helped by paper and you like la- by um, pencil and your computer. I am now able to record podcasts again. Very useful when you're running a podcast. So thank you all. Yeah, you you are paying for hosting, and for pencil having technology. To live in the modern world. So questions. Yes. Um, our first question. And the first one is anonymous. What is your very bad advice for DMs regarding what to do for time skips, locations that require several weeks of in-game travel, online campaigns, or when players just get bored? Yes, uh, sexy dances. Sexy dances. Uh, when your players get bored, um, keep their attention by just doing a sexy dance. Problem is, that's you've got their attention, but they might be distracted from the actual game. Um, well, you, you need to make the... NPCs do sexy dances. Yeah, you need to do sexy dances in character as NPC. The orc like walks up to you and then starts doing this. I'm not good at sexy dances <laughs> or music or understanding. How I don't know what you're work. talking about. That's the sexiest noise I've ever heard. Just do that every time you like. The question wasn't about seducing your players, but that seems to be what it's become. <laughs> Have you considered just the Dragon Age approach of you're going on an, an, a journey of indeterminate length, you will have a random encounter on the road? Which, to be honest, is probably actually, at least I hope it's good advice, because that's what I tend to do. I mean, it's, it's the general advice for D&D. Is have random encounters when things are boring. The bad advice 
is rolled a d20, and that's how many years pass during any downtime. Have you considered doing it in real time? So if you meet up weekly and it's like a three-week journey, you have to do three sessions on the road, which might just be talking to each other. I mean, I've, like, I know people who are enough immersion role players that they might be okay just talking to each other. I also know people who will throw Roxy. Which is why you also need to do the sexy dances. <laughs> <laughs> Have them do have the characters do sexy dances for each other. What we've invented is a strip club. <laughs> it doesn't have to be stripping. You can you can do a sexy dance fully clothed. And that's our advice to to our listeners. <laughs> okay, next, next question. Next question. Uh, this question is from Transfita. I'm in a very cursed campaign where everyone is feral and tries to eat us, and the artifacts we're supposed to get for our quest, and our DM hates us. Not really, but they do think we're annoying. It's not strictly speaking a question. I, I feel like it's to be read in, and our DM hates us? Hmm. Yeah, a um... General cry for, a general, qu uh, general cry for help. Have you considered not eating dirt? As, as just to throw that out there as one. Have you considered leaning into the the actual meaning of the word feral, and having your characters just revert to like a semi beast like state? I think. What's the question? In fact, the question says everyone is feral and tries to eat dirt, as opposed to our play. Our characters are feral and tries to eat dirt. But it is possible the GM is trying to, like, yell scene descriptions at them as they run around the fields. I mean, at that point, it's, it seems like the DM is the problem for not being feral enough. Yeah. Why doesn't the DM sit down and eat that? The DM needs to either go and release, release you back into the wild or take you to some sort of player rehabilitation centre where they can sort of bring you back into a more domesticated mindset, and then you can play. Remember, a player is for life, not just for... <laughs> I do like the, the fact that you're just eating the artifacts, though, because, like, I feel like a lot of campaigns have one character who's like, I'm going to lick it. Mm. But this is the next logical You've step. suggested that multiple quest objects have been consumed. <laughs> Like, I guess, to be fair, like, if, if you imagine Lord of the Rings, like, that would have been, like, over a lot quicker if Frodo had just eaten the ring. They I mean, over is not necessarily concluded in a positive way. It would be over. Because I feel like eating the ring would probably just, like, speed up the golemification. Yeah, but then you can pick him up and put him in the lava. Ah, just dispose of the whole hobbit. Yeah, just throw the whole hobbit away. Yeet. Like, do the magical effects still give you powers if you eat? Just like you eat a headband of intellect, you just stay smart forever. I like to imagine they do until they get digested. Mm. Like if an object is made of, say, leather, it'll give you that bonus for as long as it takes to digest some beef jerky. There's a time frame we all know offhand. <laughs> there's, there's probably a website that tells you how long it takes to digest various things. I'm not using that at all. <laughs> That's another advantage of my new laptop. That, that you can look, look things up. I can see how long it takes to digest beef jerky. Uh, about uh, 72 hours. Well, there you go, you eat a headband of intellect, you're good for three days. Yeah. Although your first thought after eating the headband of, of intellect is probably, I should not have eaten the headband of intellect. 
With my new enhanced intelligence, I've realized that maybe I shouldn't stick every single item I see in my mouth and swallow. Although that technically that would be wisdom rather than intelligence. So maybe your first thought is, I've got three days to use this. First thought is a bunch of very elaborate plans to all of the magical items around you. Yeah, I feel like some would be easier to eat than others. Like, some magic items are just full-on suits of armour. You can eat a suit of armour if you're not a coward. Just melt it down into a, a very ferric soup. Yeah. But at that point, we're basically back on lava. This is a very lava-heavy episode. Mm. It's lava -ly, but I'm... No. I feel like I have no right to complain, given... The previous, I think, 11 or 12 episodes. But I'm going to anyway. Reasonable. Have you ever wanted... Um, our last question comes from Derp Ravener, who I think we've had a question from before. Any advice for running a mystery in a game? I'm thinking less mechanics and more making it work in the narrative. Also, listening to the latest podcast episode, the best way to hide a giraffe is to dress it up in a bad giraffe costume. No, no one would possibly believe it's a giraffe then. I can't believe we didn't think of that. Yeah. Hiding it in plain sight. Yes. Um, also, best way to a mystery game is to dress all of the clues up in bad giraffe costumes. <laughs> I think... Are you saying the giraffe is a red herring? The red herrings are all in bad red herring. When I do mystery games, the main problem with mystery games is that it's, it's very easy for players to miss. The miss clues are made very obvious because it's hard to, like, describe clues in a way where it isn't their clues, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, f I think mystery games are fun, but you're relying on knowing exactly how good your players are at solving puzzles. Because you don't want it to be too hard, but you also don't want it to be too easy. You also, there's also the problem of players will often come to... Players tend to be both a lot smarter and a lot more stupid than you think. At the risk of roasting every single person who's ever been in the game where GMs. Um... So they'll often come to conclusions which make a decent amount of sense for the information you give, which are entirely wrong, and you to stick to those entirely wrong Yeah, I've definitely had that, and just gradually given more and more blatant clues, mm -hmm. and instead of, of realising that they're wrong, the players just come up with more and more convoluted ways for the new clues to fit their theory, yeah. which is just bad detectiving. There was, I'm trying to find out who originally put it, because it's not my idea. Um, it is from a website called The Alexandrian, which is the free clue rule, which is basically for anything you want the players to learn, with at least three clues that point to that um, explanation. That does seem like a good rule, because I feel like that, that is the point where they're pretty solidified in their idea. Yeah. It also means that um, if they mess up, uh, mess up, then they'll, they'll almost always get sleep. Which is the other bit of advice, which is don't hide clues because of the dice rule. At least don't hide essential dice rule. Because you don't want a situation where your players walk in, fail all their perception checks, and now the game is over because they don't have any position. Make sure there's always at least some clues that you can get without a roll. Yeah, I think... I think we've had that situation where you knew there was a clue in the, in the study, but the highest investigation role was like a seven. Mm. So after like the fourth person tried and rolled the seven, I just decided that was the new DC. Yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. If there's information the players can't continue the game without, then don't make them roll for it. Was actually, we actually gave logistics advice there. Yeah, what, what is happening? So, like, I you know, blackouts, 
few lines on their character sheet to add to the mission so they don't know what their class is to like claim the aesthetic it's a mystery game in that no one even knows what game they're playing they just roll a die and hope it's the right one it's a mystery game in that people think they're helping you with their homework and it's to see how long it takes before they realize that they're actually you're actually giving them rpg um setting descriptions it's a mystery game in that you put them in the back of a van and and suddenly they end up inside an escape room. What a good mystery game. Have mod paper kidnap you. <laughs> I would be so bad at kidnapping. I can't do heavy lifting. We have the van. Yeah, but you have to get the people into the van. I would need some sort of a very strong sidekick or hench person, if you will. This is my henchman, and this is my henchman. Goes me around and lifts for me. <laughs> on on that note, I think that's all we have time for. <laughs> it is. Um, <laughs> if you have a question, you can send it to us on Tumblr at probably bad RPG ideas, or email probably bad podcast at gmail dot com. Like I said, you can support us and help us to exist on the internet in in every way um, on patreon.com slash probably bad RPG ideas um, with patron levels start at $1 a month. Um, but if you just really don't want to give us that dollar, um, you can leave a rating or a review on your favorite podcaster. No. Don't don't message the Michael Boys reviewers on a podcatcher, um, <laughs> or follow us on Twitter or Tumblr or Facebook, and remember, remember to have, to have a, a probably bad, bad day. day.